Hello everyone, I'm Brian Beach. I'm a Senior Research Fellow at ILC. You may have seen my recent blog talking about universal basic income and universal basic services. Since we're all in lockdown and it's much harder to see people face to face, we thought it would be nice to let you see my face through the videos. And uh, one of the things that's interesting since I finished the blog and we put it into uh, the process to be published um, has been that the Spanish government announced that they intend to uh, roll out a universal basic income for all uh, and that they see the necessity in doing so during the crisis, but that they also want this to remain a permanent feature moving forward. Um, one of the key elements to it, and this has been reported on Spanish television and um, in one of the main Spanish newspapers, El País, is that uh, the estimated amount will be about 440 euro per month um, to each citizen or resident. Um, that contrasts with about uh, 950 euro per month that one earns uh, through earning the minimum wage. This raises some very important points. There is no purpose in having a policy like universal basic income if it's inadequate. If it's not going to meet people's needs, then it's an ineffective handout. It won't achieve your longer term gains, whether that's in buttressing consumer spending or whether it's just making sure people don't rely on any other benefits uh, and sources of government support uh, that exist in a given welfare system. Now, one might think that the reason the Spanish government is providing 440 euro per month rather than the equivalent of the minimum wage is because it's too costly to provide 950 euro a month to everyone. That's a fair point. It's an important consideration too as we think about the possibility for something like universal basic income and how a government might finance that. However, there is a way to deliver a universal basic income that is affordable for the state when it is combined with the provision of universal basic services. The reason this works is essentially people don't have to pay for things that they are getting through the services. So it, to an extent, reduces the amount of income they need. One additional argument that's come out recently uh, from the Social Market Foundation has called for the, the triple lock uh, on the state pension. There calls for one element of that to be scrapped in order to promote fairness for younger generations. There's an implicit social contract that the state pension is there to keep older people out of poverty because we assume at a certain point in life people are no longer able to work and therefore take their own wages. But that's not only related to age. There are plenty of people who are unable to work for very valid reasons in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s. Some of those aren't because they're unfit for work, but it's because they're, all, they're providing the care that our formal systems can't provide. So there are several dynamics around who is earning and whose production, whose productivity is counted and whose is valued. And I think if you want to bring it back to a question of intergenerational fairness with respect to what's going on with the state pension, you may be arguing yourself toward a universal basic income.